playoff tickets can be purchased at any of the four Penn Station Subway stores in uh, Fort Wayne. And you can save a couple of bucks. Pre-game will be $10, and at the, ga at the gate on Saturday, it'll be a $12 charge, students for $5. The play being wagged in from the near side. Here's Joder in the pocket, throws the left side. That's a catch made by Sharon Knight. Evades a first tackle, cuts inside the 35, gets it down to about the 31-yard line of the link. So Aaron Knight with the catch is 29th of the year. Came in with 307 receiving yards. And they've got, uh, again, two wide to the right. Here's a roll to the left side by Yoder. Looking throws, and he's got a catch. There's Austin Colum. Coleman inside the 15-yard line and bumped out of bounds on the near sideline. Yoder's pass to Austin Coleman. Again, Turner stays in at fullback, and the goal line set. And this time, uh, here's a pitch to the right side. Turner trying to break it and turn the corner, and he'll run into the end zone from three yards out at the 10-27 mark. So the Cougars got a 65-yard drive, opening drive and uh, had a fourth down conversion to boot in the mix. And at the 10-27 mark, the sixth ranked Cougars break on top. Six to nothing, and Andre Turner running it into the end zone. And looking, checking to his right. High snap over his head, back around the 46. That's picked up, and a run to the right side of the 45, and that'll do it. They're gonna lose yardage to the 44. As a great play defensively, Quinn Doan came over and made the tackle. So the bad snap, it was third down in less than three, becomes fourth down and about 11. He is under 44 yards on punt. Last week he averaged 44, and here's the kick away, end over end, that'll hit at the 40 yard line, and that hits a, a Lynx defender, and I think St. Francis has got it inside the 30 yard line, they do. That ball hit short, and was touched by one of the Lynx Keith Lewis on the recovery. Keith Lewis is credited for the recovery. Play clock is at 11, so he's got time to check that Lindenwood defense. Now he's ready. Takes the snap again. Hands it deep. Here's Campbell with a run up the middle. And tripped up, but still driving inside the 25 and down to the 20. And they give him another yard or so inside the 19-yard line. Straight eye formation now with Yoder under center. Ready to take the snap from Bryce Darling. Hands to Campbell. Trying to go off tackles. Got some room. Running and he'll run into the end zone as he got to the outside. And a run of eight yards by Antoine Campbell. So the fumble recovery by Keith Lewis pays dividends as the Cougars with 521 remaining in the first quarter. Get an eight-yard touchdown run by Antoine Campbell and they'll take a 13-0 lead. Looking back and now under center, has got the snap, looks to hand it off deep and run up the middle, not much there. Defense was there and that was Brody Calvaugh territory as he came in and stuffed the would-be carrier up around the 46-yard line. The 6'3 junior quarterback, 194 pounds, and here's a cutback by Campbell. Now carries tacklers with him across the 20 up to about the 22, maybe the 23-yard line. Kelso comes in, he's up on the wing to the left side. Here's a handoff again and dancing up the middle. Running room is there and the second level goes Antoine Campbell all the way across the 30 to about the 30. Well, they're gonna say the knee hit up around the 32, maybe the 33 yard line. Yoder again, second down and 10 on the draw. Ronald running room, Campbell 50, 45, 40. Looks for a block inside the 35, 30 and down to the 26 yard line. Antoine Campbell with his best run, the long run of the day. We mentioned he had 64 yards though in the first quarter. He be, could be uh, shaping up with a huge rushing day. So both of those available for duty here today on the road. Here's Joder dropping deep, looking, steps up in the pocket, throws in the middle, a wide open touchdown catch. That's Colin Harrop. Harrop for 27 yards at the 11.40 mark. And Joder on the money that time hit Harrop Right on the numbers. So Harrop with the touchdown at the 11:40 mark, and just like that, St. Francis extends it. Again, too wide to the right. They come up and press coverage defensively. Lindenwood does. Yoder drops the throw. Blitz is coming. Throws on the middle. He's got a catch across the 35, and that's Knight who bought some extra time as he stayed on his feet. No, it's Austin Coleman. Coleman up to the 38, 39 yard line. So Coleman took a hit at the 36. And you talk about a guy that is top for 5'8 and 182 pounds. 
to the links, defenders hit him, he kept his footing and picks up another three or four yards. Block a factor inside of six and a half minutes, time remaining, first half 21-7, St. Francis the draw, and the run to the left side by Campbell, cuts to the 40-45, turns the corner midfield and steps out of bounds into Link's territory, and now we've got some extracurriculars away from the ball. Yoder getting ready to take the snap, first and ten, rolls to his right side, looking, looking, now throws into the flats, and Coleman with a fingertip catch before he ran out of bounds inside the Lindenwood 25. They'll mark him out of bounds right around the 23-yard line. Yoder again, waiting for the snap, he's got it from Darling, rolls to his right, wants to throw, pulls it down, throws wide open catch by Cam Smith at the 10, and plows straight ahead. Did he reach the five? I think they've got him out of bounds just outside the five-yard line at the six. Yoder again with Kelso up on the wing to the right side. Here's the snap. Looks right. Pump fake. Flush to his right side. Has to throw it backside. Catch for a touchdown. That's Herrick for the second time today. That was a little bit of an improvisation by David Yoder. The pressure coming defensively from his left. He throws to the backside, and roaming the back line was Colin Harriff. And it'll be a four-yard touchdown toss. Yoder's second touchdown toss of the day at the 236 mark. They were two of eight only in the first half. Lindenwood was. Out of the gun again. They'll run the ball. And boy, and then raking out of the tackle. The Cooper's had him. Ball pops free, scramble for it. St. Francis thinks they've got it. Zach Bruce said uh, missed on a chance for a tackle for a loss, but that may turn off the benefit, St. Francis. They're waiting while they unpile up the 39, and St. Francis has got the fumble recovery. Getting up off the bottom of the pile is Keith Lewis. And I believe back hands the ball off. Here's Campbell. Quick move up the middle. Tripped up. He had a chance to score initially. Run it inside the 20 to the 15 and all the way down close to the 12-yard line, Antoine Campbell. Campbell running well today. He had 90-plus uh, yards in the first half. And Yoder under center, ready to take the snap. Looks to Campbell. Campbell picking his way and into the end zone. We just had to just basically lean across. Antoine Campbell. And a one-yard touchdown run. Cougars on the board again. Touchdown USF at the 11:09 mark. For Lindenwood Belleville. They'll look, hand it off to Harris. Harris curls up the middle and ran right into the hands of a trio of silver helmets. So no gain. He got back to the 27-yard line only. Tony Moore was in there, but again, three, four silver helmets were in there. Again, he's got it. Looks this time. A play action fake. Pivots to his left and going down. Cougars have got him for a sack back around the 44-yard line. Cougars got. A couple of players in there, Zach Bruce. Zach Bruce on the quarterback sack. He's credited with the sack. That's Lost the first of the, the game. Play. It'll be second down and Marler from the right side, hash mark, loads up, throws the fade to the corner. Looking again, nobody home. And was that ball caught? I think it was caught. Interception. I thought it was hitting the turf. And let's see if that was Alan Richardson or Cale Tabler with the interception. High snap, and that is grabbed, though, on the reflection, but they've got Marler for a sack back around the 16-yard line. Little motion, left to right behind the line of scrimmage, runs up to it, block kick at the line of scrimmage. That one is batted forward, picked up at the 20-yard line. Free ball, and the Cougars will have it at the 24-yard line. So the Cougars come up with the ball, Joe Torres Jumped on it with the block punt. With the ball back at the Lynx five yard line is Marler. High snap, and that's through the end zone, and that's a safety. Well, that's the easiest way you're ever going to get two points on the board. Austin Coleman back deep in kick return at the St. Francis 25 yard line. So far, Lindenwood has opted not to try to kick it deep to Austin Coleman. And it'll be a low line drive kick again. It'll come through, be picked up by Coleman at the 31. Runs to the 35, 40. Trying to get to the sideline. Gray steps out of a tackle. He's got a chance inside the 30, inside the 20 yard line. And finally, they catch up to him inside the 20, down around the 17 yard line. Austin Coleman, that close to his third kick return touchdown of the year. Marler looking again and takes the snap. Hands it off and uh, cut back to the left. Here's Sherman and driven down. 
right at the line of scrimmage. As playing that one well, Brandon Allman might be calling an audible. He's got two wide to the right, wants to throw. Flush to his right, rush is going. They've got him for a sack. That was Tony Moore. Moore with the Cougars' third sack of the ball game. They've all come here in the second half. And nobody put a body on Tony Moore, the 222-pound senior. Celebrating the uh, Tony Moore sack. And now Kevin is ready to pump the ball. And he'll kick it straight away this time, end over end. That's Knight catches it inside the 20, works to the 25, 30, gets by one, up, and that's Nathan Scully. Nathan Scully crossed the 40-yard line. And all the way up to about the 41-yard line. So Bobbin and Weep and Nathan Scully with the return. And out of the gun, he needs nine yards. Short drop, throws over the middle, and that one's picked off. St. Francis Lewis has got it. He'll bring it back inside the 40 to the 38-yard line. Keith Lewis, two fumble recoveries and now an interception. Cougars, their second pick of the day. Have to come up for next Saturday. Deep hand off. Here's Pierce spinning off a tackle of the backfield. Works to the 40. Leapfrogs his way inside the 35 and got another yard and a half close to the 33. Pierce is the running back. And Hunsicker rolls to the right side, gets a block, looks, throws, pumps, looking, and Knight with a catch inside the five, down to the three-yard line. Aaron Knight left his feet and got inside position on the defender. Pierce is the tailback in the eye. Matthewson in there, the fullback. They give it to Pierce. Pierce looking to run into the end zone, and he does. Three-yard touchdown run by Denzel Pierce. Pierce. That's his second carry, touchdown, touchdown run of the season. Cougar. Comes at the 704 mark. This time he's under center. They've got an offset eye. Power to the right. Here's a pitch to the right side. And boy, they run right into trouble at the 10-yard line. Cougars fought through the lead through blocks. Their defensive left side was there. Second down and 12 after that loss. Marler high snap, but got it down, runs himself and being wrapped up, and uh, he won't get back to the line of scrimmage. Let's see where they give him forward progress out to across the 10. So it'll be a Cougar victory here on the road at 44-7. to Fourth straight victory for St. Francis. And they'll close the year with a record of 8-2, 4-1 in the Mideast League, and 4-1 on the road. Similar record at home, they close out at 4-1 and one at home as well. Coach Donnelly, a uh, great way to finish the regular season today. It was. Kids played well. This was a kind of a trap game. You know, um, this team's a lot better than their record. You know, they've had some injuries uh, a little late, but they're a darn good uh, first-year program, you can tell. But uh, kids play hard, got it done today, played a lot of people early, 11 minutes to go in the second after the second quarter, third quarter, now yeah. there's going to be substitutes. We've got better guys out of there and kept melty. It was a good day. Kids played well. Tim Lewis fills in for Taylor Brown. Has a heck of a game today on defense. They did. We've got good guys stepping up. We've got good players. We're, uh, we're doing the things that they're, they're coached to do. Kids, uh, I was proud of them today because we could have taken a day off. And, and we did. Uh, we didn't play a perfect game. Dave uh, Luther made some good plays and we missed some. Defensively, we made some adjustments at the half. The only thing they had was a little cutback play early. Uh, I got Antoine Campbell here, Joe. He had a heck of a game. His 600 yard rushing game this season. Uh, he also goes into third place on uh, 100 yard rushing games with number eight. So, Antoine, congratulations. Thank you. Your Thank thoughts you. on today's game? I thought we did a good job today. We came out, did what we had to do. It's kind of hard to play a game when you're overlooking, kind of looking playoffs, but we came out and we played our game today. It's tough not to peek ahead, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Real tough. Coach challenged you guys at halftime to play, pick up the intensity. How, how did you feel that worked out in the second half? I think we responded to that. I think we came out, we came out and we scored early. And I think we just put the game away and did what we had to do. Uh,